starting. Oh, we're live now. And my hair is wet. So, hi. You can't tell. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to our Sears Trilogy live show. And I almost forgot about it. Yay me. Oh, I got to pause that video before I start. There we go. All right. So we're live to discuss the Sears Trilogy by Rochelle Decker. So that's the choosing, the calling, and the returning. So this one is going to be a spoiler-free live show because Melanie has only read The Choosing, and if you guys have only read The Choosing or The Calling, then we'll keep it spoiler-free and try not to spoil the returning for you guys or The Calling, wherever you are. So granted, though, the synopsis on the back of these pretty much gives a lot of weight. Yes, they do, actually. <laughs> I read the synopsis for the second book, and I'm like, okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad when I read the synopsis of the second book. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> really? Yeah, just they tell, pretty tell much tell you everything. <clears throat> What's that? It's like, just tell us everything. Just tell us, yeah, let's go. Yeah. So, so The Choosing by Rochelle Decker is a young, I think it's, I think it is branded as a young adult. So it's a young adult dystopian. And it has a very interesting premise. So in this dystopian world, if you are part of this as a young woman, you're pretty much groomed to be the perfect bride. And then when you reach, I think it's 17 or 16, I think it's 17, you are part of a choosing ceremony. And if you are not chosen by a man to be his wife, then you will be what is called a lint and live apart from society. You can't be a part of it. You can't have kids. You can't get married. You are just like labor for them. So I'm gonna put my phone on silent. <laughs> and um, and so Carrington, we start out the book at Carrington's choosing ceremony, and she's not chosen, and so she is sent to be a lint, which is the lowest of society in this the authority city. And then the. So that is told in Carrington's point of view. And then we move to The Calling, which follows Remco's point of view, which is the male lead from The Choosing. And then we move to re The Returning, which is kind of the next generation, almost, of the first group of Sears. And we follow Elisa's point of view. So Elisa. Elise. Yeah. I really liked her name. Yeah, but that's a new name. Yeah. So I was pumped when I read The Choosing because I, I don't read books in one sitting very often, and I actually read this in one night, and it's not a very thin book because it just it gripped me, and I wanted to know what happened to it. Um, I wanted to know what happened to the characters. I was getting really invested in these characters. So I really enjoyed The Choosing, and then... The returning was, or the calling was decent. It was pretty good. It still had me on the edge of my seat. I still wanted to know what happened to these characters. I was really kind of sad at the end. And then the call, the returning was just plain weird. <laughs> like, I don't know if Rochelle Decker is just much more charismatic than I am, and I'm just a lot more conservative on the side of things, but, um, or she's just very, I don't know where she is on that, that sort of thing, but that was so just... So spiritually, you mean? Like, is it was spiritually it was weird? Yes, very very much on the spiritual side of things. It was very weird for me. Interesting. Yeah, which we'll get into when we talk about the different elements of it. Yeah. Because I, I could rant about how weird this book was for me. So I'm wondering if Rochelle Decker and her family are more on a charismatic side of things, because, like, I grew up in a Baptist more conservative churches yeah. so like I, I don't know if you just they're more charismatic or something. It well, was I'm, I'm interested to hear what you have to say yeah uh, it's like it was an interesting progression it didn't stay as strong as the choosing was okay so what did you think of the choosing so my it was it had so much in it like I mean there's just lots of controversy and then there was also like a lot of 
like beautiful writing. Like she does really grip you in her writing skills. Like they are really top notch. But mm -hmm. at, like the first part of the book, I was really captivated with the world she built. She built an incredible world and like it very, it felt similar to Divergent. And I'm like wearing gray today because I was like, gray was the lens color, right? Right. And it is also the color in um, the first book of Divergent, her father's family, and she comes from the, oh, I forget what it's called. Um, there's like the four things, and one of them is. I like the caste system. No, it's like Kandar, and then there's, um, which is black and white, and then there's like the one her father comes from and it's, it's gray anyways. And it reminded me divert of divergent, the same kind of similar kind of world that she's kind of fighting against. And she meets someone within it. I, I, you know, it's, it was really hard. Cause at first I was like, Oh, it's really going good. There's no weird things in here with like violence and like psychotic things. It was like a thriller more than it was like a dystopian. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Halfway through, I'm like, what? Wow, this is crazy. <laughs> halfway through, it like turns into a CSI episode, and I'm like, or a Criminal Minds episode, and I'm like, wow. Like, uh, she obviously gets some of her storytelling ideas from her father, because yeah. from what I understand, Ted Decker writes a lot of that type of stuff. I don't read as stuff because it is really dark and gripping <laughs> yeah has told me like a lot of his crime novels and stuff and so when Rochelle started writing this I was like oh she's her father's daughter like yeah just with that I totally agree and it turned into a thriller and I was like uh I don't like thrillers very much <laughs> but I do I so <laughs> loved how she built that world and you can tell like she had like this femininity to her compared to her father's writing. And I'm, I feel so bad for comparing her writing to her father's, but it's really hard not mm -hmm. to. And I absolutely loved, I didn't like her character as much, like um, a, a Carrington's character, as much as I loved um, Re Remco. Yeah. The, the guy he was, was an incredibly written character. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. he didn't even have to say words, and he spoke volume, yeah. even in the pages, which I thought was an incredible skill that she was able to portray and yeah. and do. And I just, I really, I don't think I'll continue with the um, series just because I just don't know about the psychological stuff. Like, and then, like you said, it was very charismatic. -y. Which isn't a terrible thing, but no, not um, at all. It, it was just that it was hard to grasp. Like I, I could tell like she's, you know, uh, reaching towards the character of Jesus in a sense. Yeah. But, um, but I wasn't sure if he was like a prophet or where he came from, if he was a spirit, like he could have even been a spirit, like leading these people out of like nowhere. You just oh, didn't the Aaron know. character you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, Aaron, Aaron. Yeah. And uh, you just didn't know where, you know, he kind of was mysterious. And I liked that aspect of it. But then going into the next book, I could feel that it would fall flat. And, mm -hmm. and I kind of felt like that's how your review went too, like how you felt about it, the second, yeah. the second book. So I'm not sure, I haven't made a completely 100% decision about like the whole series, but at the moment, like if, I think if it comes up in my library, I probably will pick up number two and three. Yeah. But I, it's such a beautiful book. Like I want it on my shelves just because it's pretty. <laughs> I know, like this whole series together, it's like, oh. I didn't like all of you, but you look so pretty. It doesn't it? I know. <laughs> like, I just love how the colors progress to like in the Authority City, and then it just looks like when they're outside of the Authority can, City. And can then I see like the first couple pages because they did a really good job on the first couple pages of like design. Like oh, that? It's the same. Oh, so cool. Wonderful. 
Yeah, they did that for her as well. Yeah, they did such an amazing job on on the the layout of design for the books too. Like there's yeah. so many good aspects and then there's just kind of weird ones and it really like there's so much to talk about this with you, with Angela, because like, I mean, even, even the Christian uh, faith aspects, like I was really worried how the story was going to go. I don't want to give out too many spoilers, but, but the world that she created was intensely, oh, I just, you know, you're like. It was frustrating actually, because you're reading this as a Christian and you're thinking I could totally almost futuristically see this happening like this could be a future whether it be like our faith and our religion that it gets done to or another one or a new one completely and it just kind of melds a bunch together or like you know just in the future you just kind of see like man if that would happen that would be really scary for like for someone who started off with that faith and then watching it get it and demented the way that the authority city did it yeah <laughs> you know so i was i was reading that and I'm like there's almost a bit of realisticness to this world she created so i guess we're moving on into i guess the world building part of it since we're talking about it so like overall the world building like it was just incredible for a dystopian world it was pretty like you still had that control of an authority over like that big brother type feeling which most dystopians have with like the capital from the hunger games and um, I can't, I don't read a whole ton of dystopians anymore. And then the scientists from the Anomaly Trilogy. Yes. So you have that big brother type feeling to it. And where everybody is not so much controlled as they are, they have these set of rules to follow. And I really, like as much as as a Christian reading it, I hated seeing what they did with scripture and mm -hmm. stuff and how they had some sort of religious order and they kind of took scripture and made it fit and made these rules out of it and these very um, male dominated society, these very um, patriotical rules that they came up with it. And as a woman and a Christian reading this, like I understand that, you know, the Bible is not against women. The Bible is not putting women down as like, as unfortunately some people do see it as. Mm -hmm. So reading that, that somebody has actually taken that and made an authority city out of that. And then it's like, man, and that was the realistic part of it that like you could really see someone using that in like, I think there's even a Bible verse that a little bit of yeast, bad yeast can spoil the dough. So a little bit of lies mixed in with truth. Well, and, isn't that, it's totally, it's actually it's so realistic. Cause even, even in the garden of Eden, uh, the mm -hmm. serpent used, um, some of what God had said yeah. to deceive her. So I do understand like that's, and like the, it, it was incredible for her to portray that and to bring that forward and not distort it too much or too little to make it so it's not believable. She did a very good job of balancing all that out to make it so it's deceptive and yeah. exactly what it was, you know? It was really incredible and then even but even still like going back to those roles like you were talking about and stuff like the it didn't just affect her it also affect remco because yeah. he had he couldn't he had a, a speech impediment so and that's not a spoiler really no i don't think so <laughs> But anyways, it, it, I know that in the beginning, it talks about him and how he couldn't get in because it, as they were introducing his character, we learned that in the very beginning part of him. So I think that like, even it affected him, which was, you know, sad because that's the reality of the world. It is just like the relation, like, every, there was so much to talk about in this book. Yeah. Like, relationships characters world like i don't even know where to start is so much <laughs> well like since you brought up Remco, let's just talk about characters then and sure. like <clears throat> larkin was the friend she met is that right yeah i adored larkin yes. i really liked how she was written and like i'm a sucker for a good side character and people should know this by 
from watching my channel by now. Like, I am a real sucker for a good side character. So I really enjoyed Larkin and Remco's friend. I forgot his oh. name, but Remco's. Yeah, I loved that character too. Well, I wasn't sure about him in the beginning, but he is so cool, you know? Yeah, like, I really liked actually a lot of the city guards because, like, the city guards and what yeah. Remco was a part of had a sense of fear for the Lins. But even the commander didn't fill, fit that bill. And then Remco's friend and Remco himself weren't ones that instilled that fear into those women. Yeah. So I really liked the characters and how they were written. I wasn't too sure of how I felt about Kara Carrington. Because I know she goes through a lot of being ripped from her family of not being chosen and seeing herself as worthless yeah. and because she wasn't chosen and then you know and then there's that almost that tug of war of seeing a way out you want to take that way out like if that way out was good for her when she yeah. was off with that chance not to be a lint anymore yes. and the way that situation played out and mm -hmm. even that character I forget his name. I didn't like him. I, I, I think I blanked him out of my memory because I didn't like him either. I Maybe his name is I think his name is Isaac. Hel oh wait, they give, they give the character Helms? list at the beginning. I like that. Helms is the friend, right? Oh yeah, Helms, I think. Yeah. Um Yeah, I think it's... Um, and Dodson, I think, is the other city watch guard that you're thinking yeah. about. That yeah, but Isaac Knight, who is the... Oh, yes. Oh, Thank someone you. said Rampa's friend's name is Helms. Oh, hi. Thank, Thank you. you. You're great. <laughs> Way to be on it. <laughs> yeah, I wish I actually had re reread The Choosing before the live show, but I got distracted by other books. Yeah. Where did you but, see um, that? Hmm? Where'd you see that comment? Oh, it's in the live chat. I have our video up in the background on my channel. So, yeah, I liked the way the um, Isaac was written too. I liked the way he was written too. Yeah, uh, he like I liked how um, w regarding um, Isaac and how he was written. What I loved about it was how Rachel. Is it Rachel or Rochelle? Rochelle. Rochelle played the two um, parts where you didn't see what was going on and you yeah. only saw from the other person's perspective and point of view and uh, where we go from Carrington to Isaac and just kind of getting glimpses. And, and then, of course, you realize later um, who he really was. But um, it, was, it was done really well. Yeah. And, like, I liked the whole, like, there's almost, like, two storylines going. Like, there's this development of where the Authority City is going. So there's almost, like, a more sinister plot, which you find out more in the calling because oh, it shifts very far from that original patriotic um, religious rule system into a completely different system. They actually get rid of that in the calling because different men come into power after what Isaac does. And um, so there's that switch. And so there's that build up that's happening with some of the authority figures in the book. And then Isaac's, what happens with Isaac sort of um, triggers that. Oh. And then that becomes a switch in the calling. And then the main part of what the returning is fighting against, because in the calling, <clears throat> um, there's a new president, Damien Gold, who is being controlled by the scientist. And I thought these characters, like, I wasn't too sure what I felt about some of these enemy characters and the bad guys. And just that whole storyline of moving from that more religious order, that twisted religious order, into this more... Um, chemical controlled and even more like power control oh, wow. um, society the way that switch was was very hard to follow especially with all these men switching powers and these men on the council and who was manipulating who 
And even in the returning, they brought up this character who was a part of the bad side that made no sense to why he was there, except to have someone who was desiring so much power and would go the length to be evil. So like that whole storyline of that story was very strange for me. Yeah. And and I think that was part of that whole um, kind of criminal minds mystery that was happening in yeah. the background. Now, because um, just a quick question regarding the criminal minds thing: Does yeah. the other two books have the same like thriller feel? Uh, like it didn't get that way until about halfway in this book. Um, yes. So I'm wondering if that was the same in the other two books. Do you still have that sort of those that element of writing that is? Um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's very like, yeah, like a uh, murder mystery and like, but, but like even deeper, you know, like yeah. it's really deep into like the, the thought of the person and, um, and, and describes exactly what's happening. <laughs> I know. I was like, there was a part where I was like, Oh my oh, God. What is oh, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Like there's just, I had to keep reading because I just wanted this to end. I wanted I know. to save people. I was just like, this has to <laughs> not end this way. But, um, it actually does. Like, you see, that was the confusing switch for me is that we had this criminal minds, story in the background with this um psychotic um murder scene happening in the background and it switches completely focusing on the shift of power in the authority city and focusing on this rebellion that the sears the group the sears kind of switch into so there was a huge switch and like that's where the character characters got confusing for me and like I guess that's why she puts a list of characters in the front of her books, which was actually really helpful because so many times I'm flipping back and I'm like, okay, who is this person again? <clears throat> and yeah. like for, like it totally switches out of that. And that's why it was like, you know, it didn't continue with any of that feeling. It didn't continue with that storyline, but that event kind of triggered the shift of power in the authority city. So I guess Isaac's, um, weird psychoness um, triggered that change, and the event was needed for that. And so, it kind of, and you see that the that same psychotic sort of mental um, issues and stuff does it plays a role in the next book? Well, that event does, but like that's about it. Okay. Yeah, like the event triggered the change in the way the Authority City run. So that's when they decided to actually get rid of that more religious rules that they had set because they get rid of Isaac's position because he was the one in charge of that. Like, he wanted that purity, which is what was behind some of that. Yes. So because he went that way, they decided to actually wipe off that position and wipe off that change and it moves into something totally different in the next books okay well that's so. interesting like i i would like i that's what i'm not i'm not sure about like i really did want to i really like her writing i just wish there wasn't so much psychotic stuff happening <laughs> you know, I know. but like, it does make you cling to the story but a yeah. couple of things that i really liked too was the um the issue of relationship and stance, like the pressures that people put on us, like especially in regards to her mom and her brother. Yeah. Oh, it was so heartbreaking. I actually cried at that one scene it just with her family that it was incredibly moving. And the way she wrote that and also just the, uh, the way she ties in um, the theme of – being chosen and who your true value is and where it lies is really was beautiful. And I think that her writing is just really well, um, like I didn't have a problem reading her book at all. Like, no. you know, sometimes you can go back and you're like, Oh, wait a minute, whatever. I didn't get that. Or it just the writing is a little bit 
hard to mentally follow. Yeah. This was incredibly easy to follow in the choosing. Yeah. I guess it changes a bit when you get into the returning because there's some of the confusion of um, the world building is in a sense changing. It's more the characters of who's who, especially oh. with the shift of change in the authority city, and then trying to understand what the actual motives are behind some of those men's ideas. But then when you get to the returning, you find that there's almost like there's a good force with Aaron and the way he's teaching. There's an evil force pushing the authority city and those leaders so you actually get more of a spiritual battle there as well and okay. it, like I would say the returning actually got very dark in the matters of a spiritual battle and there was moments I was reading I was like oh I'm not reading this before bed like it actually got like to a point where I was like that's really dark and like it very much yeah. had a picture of the spiritual battle yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I <laughs> see. That's what I mean. Like, I'm so torn. I really do want to find out how everything ends, but I'm so satisfied actually with how this one ends. Yeah. Like, I was completely satisfied actually with how the choosing ended. I liked that. You know, it just kind of goes off into this. We, you know, hope the best of what would happen, but at the same time, you want um other people from the books to gain or from the first book to gain the freedom and yeah you know that moved on and then in the calling like this isn't a spoiler but in the calling remco and carrington do get married because they say it in the synopsis on the back and like now this is all from remco's point of view and so we're switching from carrington who found her self-worth who found where her worth truly lies and then when Remco and Carrington obviously left, because that's what the calling says on the back, Carrington left. So what Remco is going through now is, I followed Carrington because I love her, but I'm not 100% sure if I am completely sold out into what she believes or what this group of Sears believes. Yeah. He just became this military figure in this little rebellion. And so he's struggling, and Aaron speaks to him a lot, of like letting go of his fear. So a lot of what his battle with inside of him is fear. Carrington's is worth and finding value and love in herself. And then Remco is, um, you know, being the provider, being the husband and the protector and not giving into fear. And like, they're very tested with giving into fear with some of the events that happened. And then in the returning, it just got weird. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, so, like, I might as well just move into, like, the spiritual aspect of this because um, I've been, like, alluding to it as I'm talking here. So, like, I, I liked Aaron in the first book. I like that because even in the Bible, God always leaves a remnant. There is always a remnant to carry on his word, to carry on um, yeah. his truth to tell other people. So there was always a remnant left behind. And I liked that Aaron was this idea of a remnant and he could bring the word of God and the truth of God to people. What I didn't like though, is that there was so much of a focus on God, the father and God, the spirit, that there was no focus on the salvation through Christ. Okay, like people yeah. were gaining freedom. There was no salvation or freedom. There was just, you are worth, you are valued, you are the daughter of the king, you are mm. the son of the king, which is very true and also very powerful as well to teach, but right. then not understanding, you know, there's so many times where these, any of these characters through all three books kept forgetting and had to be kept reminded, and it's almost like they kept questioning what they had gone through, whereas, like, if you would have put salvation in there and salvation through Jesus, you would have had that, that's the word I'm looking for, certain Solidifying, like you're, so, you're solid. Yeah, like we have that, oh man, that word is slipping my mind, but we have that. Assurance. Assurance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have that assurance that that happened, that we are saved. And so these people weren't getting that through that aspect. And so, and I, I didn't like that 
Aaron was almost seen as this Jesus figure, but yeah, I was really confused with him in the beginning, and but at the end, I thought maybe okay, he's he's like John the Baptist, like I yeah. Don't know. Like, I was trying to go with the John the Baptist figure, but then like, but he seemed like like he floated over to I don't know, uh, I don't know. It was a little bit. Like, yeah. He was in, he was out, he was in people's dreams, he was in people's minds, he was in. Like, That's what you know, I mean, like, exactly. That's what I was like, well, is he a spirit? Or, like, what is he? Like, I wasn't sure who Aaron was was as a side character, I guess I should yeah. say. And, and I guess think he was just a character. Like, I don't think he was supposed to represent anything except for a messenger. And, you know, and that's what was, like, yes, supernatural things can happen. So many things happen to Aaron in this book series that are just like, wait, what? Like so, like not only did he just because he kind of played an outside role in choosing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm assuming that in calling and returning, he plays more of a predominant role. No, he doesn't. Oh. He's floating in and out of the sidelines, people keep going to him for you know guidance and stuff, but he oh. just like floats in when somebody needs him, floats yeah. out when they don't need him, and it's just like it was so frustrating. It was almost like stay put, man. You are not some. Well, that's you know, what I mean. Like, he almost feels like he's a spirit. Yeah, like it was very weird. It was like you are not like I don't know what you are. Can you please stay put? Like, you know, <laughs> like at one point, Remco's taken captive. I'm not. I won't say where or when. Like at one point, Remco's taken captive, and Aaron shows up in the front seat of the vehicle, and he's having this conversation with Aaron, and then Aaron's gone. And I'm like, what is he a figment of everybody's imagination? And it would be something very interesting to ask Rochelle if she meant him to be like the Holy Spirit. Well, that's the thing. Like, I don't he know. Almost, he but he almost like spirit. Jesus. I don't know. It's very confusing. <laughs> but like, he always talked about the Father, and oh, I got somebody agreeing with us. Like, awesome. he always talked about the Father. He always talked about the Spirit. So I don't think he was supposed to represent that. And, you know, like in the choosing, I really liked, you know, when Carrington heard the father's song and she believed that she was loved and valued. I, I really that. liked that love of God and love of the father aspect to it. Yeah. It was so beautiful in that um, there's a, a vision and an idea of a field. Like this isn't a huge spoiler, but there's a always a vision of a field and that actually happens to like almost every character to the oh. point like and when, when you get to the returning um it was very peaceful those moments i really enjoyed them yeah but when you get to the rest of the books it's almost like this is this thing known throughout the series it's like oh did you experience the field yet and it's like um okay or like aaron's like yeah everybody talks about the field you know or like this vision. Yeah, that's very interesting. I don't know what to take on this. <laughs> and like it moved away. Yeah, and it moved away from that beauty of that moment that Carrington had in the father's field. And you know, as it progressed, it just got stranger. And there's like there's there like, moments like when I don't want to give spoils away, but there was moments, special moments when Carrington started to um deal with the whole, whole identity of being chosen and being valued and and stuff where she meets aaron and you feel almost like god has touched her and it is a beautiful moment and those field moments also so it's kind of taking that and 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 over exploiting it i guess in the next two books would you yeah. say that's true i think it takes it and it just puts it as a thing that happens it's almost like our like almost have you experienced our, God or something? Yeah, it's almost like our baptism, actually. So it's almost like a, uh, I don't want to call baptism a ritual. What is that? Sacrament of, no. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally like. A like yeah. Baptism? I don't know if it's. But it like, you know those things we do for, like, we do baptism to signify the choice that we have made. And, to and like a, an outward uh, expression or example, or like um, so like the field becomes like a like, thing we do, like communion or baptism. Like the experience of the field doesn't become 
special anymore because you know Carrington goes oh, through, I got it, yeah. goes through it. All like, half like it's the almost like in this book. If you get baptized every Sunday or something, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. It's like you lose, you lose Sunday. the value. <laughs> yeah. So like, it just got very strange and it wasn't special anymore. And then, you know, for Carrington and Remco, what they went through. So Remco was dealing with fear. Carrington was dealing with worth. And then the third book was just. We like so the third book is focused on their daughter Elise and she almost becomes the savior type figure and she yeah, almost that's gets what I kind of got the feel of and I wasn't sure uh, how that would um, work out because I was a little worried about it <laughs> yeah and like I thought she was gonna like lead something and lead a revival but she actually had supernatural powers when connected or together with this other group that were the generation from this group of seers when they got together they could oh i'm sorry i'm not spoiling <laughs> are you spoiling i'm not i'm trying not to I, I, <laughs> no spoilers but, but no she gets this like almost supernatural powers and that was very does that does it state it in the beginning of the book for returning no <laughs> okay, this is <laughs> I'm sorry. Bad. Probably a spoiler. We're terrible at spoiler-free shows. Um, <laughs> but the first book we haven't really spoiled too much. Or the second book. The second or the book second book. It was just it's this book that just kind of starts me off on this rant because like the field and all those moments with God the Father and the Spirit just start to get less special and Aaron just gets a lot weirder. Yeah, because so it, basically what I'm feeling and kind of sensing is that um, that the returning is hard to pinpoint exactly what the purpose of the book is. Yeah. Besides returning. So they, are they returning back to – because, I mean, it's obvious choosing, calling, um, returning, you'd think, is returning back to – where we started, right? Well, returning is more like a like a revival. So like oh. people in this authority city, because you have that twisted religious system, a lot of truths were lost. Yeah. And so when Aaron is bringing that truth back to those same scriptures that were used as rules for these people, and Aaron's bringing truth back into their lives, so there is like choosing, knowing that you are chosen, the calling is being called, and then the returning is almost the revival of bringing everybody back to this. And it just got very strange with all these supernatural powers. And then there was moments where, like, characters kept forgetting, you know, and kept doubting. Like, there's always doubt. Well, I think that like, that's a theme in most in the first book too. So I think that that it would carry into most of the characters and i think probably that has to do with some of the world itself um and 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 the world at that time because they didn't have and what i actually loved that she i don't know did they have um the letters uh, this is the very very beginning of the book basically um the histories it's actually in the first like 23 pages and you get like the histories it's like a darker page and it's basically out of the authority um, and it's a history section 1.3 and then there's another one that has histories. Does she go back to like a bit of the histories no. of the world? Because I no. wanted to kind of know what happened to get them to that place in the world. So I guess I'm so not sure if I want to go through the next books just because I actually want to know more about like I wish that there was more about this um, world in a sense and how it was developed and maybe some of the past. If she I, it would be cool if she she came out with like a prequel to the series. Yeah, yeah. and no, like the histories get forgotten because again, that's the thing the Authority City set up. So when they switch from that system to the different system, like right. they get rid of all of that. And even Aaron, they don't have scriptures to go back to anything like it's all just what Aaron is saying so there's no scriptures they're just taking what Aaron is saying and these supernatural moments and feelings of and there is moments like you can't totally 
call them crazy because there's moments where like even in people's lives where you just feel this wave of peace or this like you just have these moments where you just know that it is true and i definitely liked those but just with the returning it just got very strange and like a lot of these things like you constantly heard this spirit or this voice whispering remember who you are and, yeah, and that was also in the beginning of this book too and and something they struggled with i think that that's so rochelle basically has the recurring theme of like um questioning who, who you are like your weaknesses and kind of um yeah which are really good character uh driven uh writing qualities you want characters that are uh, struggling and um i guess you kind of have to have that angst to continue on it could yeah. be a lot of different ways but it seems like she kind of has her characters call, always kind of questioning yeah which isn't like, a bad thing but it it's uh, and some of it's circumstantial um you know uh circumstances in the book it, what i loved about it was that it never each chapter as you went through it wasn't all the same. So you always had something different and a different aspect to either the world, either the characters, or something in general to kind of keep you moving through the story, which I really loved about her writing. Do you think that's yeah. the same as the second and the third book as well? Even though I know there's aspects that you didn't really enjoy so much and like some of it was weird and hard to follow, did you feel like it was still, the pacing was really well done? Yeah, like, again, this was another book I read within two days. Like, this was another book that I just wanted to know what happened. And I was just really pulled along with it. This one, I struggled through because of the strange um, spiritual battles, spiritual elements. And like I said, the whole, there was so much, like, it almost took those special moments of that whispering voice, remember who you are, or the field, and just kind of blew them up into this, constant thing like it was just it wasn't special anymore in fact like hearing remember who you are so much made me think of the lion king and i just heard like mufasa's voice in my head whispering <laughs> simba remember who you are and i'm like well this is just going somewhere <laughs> like and i don't know why it bothered me so much because like when you bring up it I, like when i think about it now with some of the points you brought up yeah they're actually really good and like, these aren't bad things necessarily. It's just, I didn't like how there was that lack of the idea of salvation through Christ. Like I felt, I don't like know, I could be wrong. Us. Yeah, like I could be wrong. Like if you read it and find that you pull something out of it. I'm, I'm the same, I felt the same even in the first book. So that's why I was really leery in a mm -hmm. sense to go on with it because I wasn't sure how this whole, uh, thing was gonna go and because there's so much spiritual the reason why it's such a debatable thing is because it's written a lot in that book you know like yeah. the first the whole world itself is built on this religious idealism mm -hmm. and so and then you have the balance of what real Christianity is and I think that's why it's so hard for me because I'm like how like how it, it, I, I totally love that she is uh showing you real kind of um uh faith in a sense uh but then but then you lack that real real faith in jesus you know <laughs> you, lack, you lack that grounding you like it's yeah. a pendulum. like you swing one way to the legalistic and then you swing the other way to the overly um, spiritual focus to like the like yeah, the very like, it doesn't feel so balanced. Yeah, there's no balance. There's no roots. There's no grounding holding it. And I would have liked to see like Aaron have a Bible or something that he kept and had found in the remnants of what used to be this world because they don't or go like, back into that. Or maybe even like how he came to know yeah exactly. this sort of faith that he had and i understand that you know maybe some of that was lost in this new society and i kind of like gave it grace thinking well maybe they didn't know 
about Jesus and and they're just kind of going with a God sort of feel yeah and so I kind of wanted to know more about Aaron and uh yeah. And, and, and the world and, and the histories and, and, and more, I guess, in the other way of the story, which I felt like it was going this way. And I thought, oh, I kind of want this or that. And without saying like exactly what happened or how Aaron impacted people or how he, or how he even came about, like, I just kind of wanted to know more about him. He seemed very like elusive, almost like a spirit. That's why I was like, yeah like, what are you <laughs> what like, are you i finished the entire series and i still have no idea where aaron came from what he is and what he represents because of the things that happens in the calling and the returning that are just like have me going where are you like he yeah. comes he goes he doesn't stay i think because he plays such an important role in the decisions of the main characters and yeah. how they're swayed in every kind of different situation. I I think that's why it's so confusing because you expect more out of him. He almost feels like a second, a third main character, uh, a strong side character that you, that he plays a huge role in the decisions of your characters. So yeah, he's very confusing and very elusive and, that's not faith. Faith is very solid and very grounding. And I think that's why we're getting so confused because we want to yeah. feel like there's something grounding about him. There's something solid about him. But uh, to me, uh, like I wish there was, I mean, he played an important role. He wasn't the, um, what the book was about, but yeah. it was just, um, yeah, really interesting. <laughs> well, that um, beloved friend comments that he might be a prophet, and I like that idea of him too, of being the prophet. Like, we have that idea of, like, maybe he's like a John the Baptist figure, like, the voice in the wilderness, and, you know, and I, like, people in Isaiah and Jeremiah's time probably thought they were off the rocker, but at the same time, Jeremiah and Isaiah had the, the law to go back to, they had the law and the exodus and like they had the first five books of the bible for them to say like you know this isn't just us going off or you know we're just saying god told us this like this is already written for you guys in the <laughs> law and you guys are breaking it and you it know would be neat, like going on that to figure to, to i would i would like beg Rich, rochelle like Give us a prequel then. Tell us where he came from. <laughs> where yeah, like, is he, where is this prophet from? <laughs> yeah, they give him some sort of root that didn't make him seem so crazy. Like there's just <laughs> moments where I'm like, and it's true, like that's probably totally what the people of Israel thought of yeah. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea. Like they probably like well, what yeah, are even you even Moses, him? uh, you know, he's building a massive ark. People mocked him. They made fun of him. Actually, a lot you know of the what? prophets got made fun of. So one guy, uh, kids um, called one of the prophets a bald head or something. And yeah, they got attacked by bears. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was going to say, that didn't end well. But, <laughs> no. But I mean, like, a lot of them do get mocked and are made fun of because of their their faith in God. And yeah, like one, one prophet, he says, God, I'll do this. If you put, if you put do on this and not on the ground or, you know, it was very crazy what they did and how they were perceived by the general yeah. population. And like Aaron definitely has that sense of spiritual crazy. I don't know if you want to call it, but like he definitely, especially for some of the things that happens in the next two books, you know, it's very strange, but then, you wonder where all these words come from and like oh somewhat um you got corrected noah built the ark not moses oh my goodness yes thank you thank you very much <laughs> why am i thinking i'm just thinking of major prophets and all of a sudden i'm like moses yes no they built the ark of the covenant the ark oh you got the ark of the covenant though you got it halfway there i don't know what i was mixing up Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but um, 
yeah, like I really I liked Erin. And she was a part of me just wishes wishes there was a bit more grounding. And like a lot of the spiritual aspects of this series probably wouldn't have bothered me Moses. as much. I, I can't I'm sorry, going back, I'm gonna tell my husband I said Moses filthy. <laughs> He's gonna get so floored. If y'all don't know, my husband's a pastor. <laughs> Way to go. He's going to be like, Melanie, do you not listen to my sermons? Do you not read your Bible? <laughs> All your kids are going to be like, Mom. I know. They probably, yeah. It's so, it's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, go on. I'm sorry. I missed, I had to say that because it was all I was thinking about while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Um, yeah, like, I, like, I don't think the spiritual aspects of this book wouldn't would have been as weird to me i think too a lot of it is um it is a very charismatic view on some things and i'm finding like i have a i just i'm meeting more people that are very charismatic and some things they say are just like um no but like and but then some things i agree with them and i think what should be the grounding for everything is the Bible, the word of God, the truth. Like that should be the grounding for everything. So if something somebody says, you know, makes me go, wait, what? Like, yes, I always want to ask them. So where do you find that in the Bible? Or yeah, get corrected because I mean, seriously, it, it's so easy like to be, um, get something wrong or yeah. even just like twist it just a little bit. So it makes sense. Like, when Jesus was being tempted, the devil used scripture. Yeah. But God yeah. said, no, I will not live by bread alone. You know, yeah. not, he didn't say, I can't do that. But he's saying, I am going to stick with the word of God that I breathe life into and made. Like, I, I would just, I love that. Yeah. And I think that's why this was missing for me is just some sort of grounding with Aaron just to have him maybe have a remnant of something, some part of the Bible, like just, you know, some of the letters or some of the gospel. John, or, or John, yeah, or something. Yeah, like just, just to have something, you know, where, or, you know, like, cause like anybody could come and say like, God told me this. It's like, well, that's where half of the crusades went wrong. Like, you know, and, and yeah. Wait, so like, someone saying something? Yeah, they said that's why we need to take everything with a grain of salt. This is a fiction book series. And yeah, it's so true. Like, you know, it is fiction. And I had to keep that in mind too. But like, you know, there's just parts where like, mm, you know, I think he could have used a little bit of a solid grounding. But I did like, I did like how, you know, with the choosing and the calling and the, especially with Remco and Carrington, what God taught well, it them. Says, it says it's Christian fiction. So you want yeah. it to be Christian. Now, on what kind of spectrum? Like, it's actually classified in the catalog as Christian fiction first and foremost, and then fiction second. So it's okay. really important to know, like, this is marketed for Christian, and, like, you want it to be, you're expecting when you buy and you purchase it and you put your money on it, you're expecting it to be a Christian foundation. And... So taking the whole Bible in perspective for the yeah. general audience of what Christian means, you know, from the left to the right of it. So it's kind of like you want to kind of stay in between so that you can um, speak to the whole general Christian audience, which is yeah. really important. And I think that's why. And because this book is actually written with a major theme of of right and wrong faith right mm -hmm. like it that yeah. is the theme of that book it is completely right and wrong faith so it is really um a hot spot and a hot topic for us because and we can't almost you can almost not take it for a grain of salt in a sense just because that was the whole purpose of the writing and the theme of the story was uh, to highlight when faith and when the scriptures are twisted. And yeah, when, you know, that's actually a brilliant point, and that just made me think too. Like, because 
when the authority city had that twisted sense of the Bible, they had the book of the histories. They had those words and those verses and stuff. And then when we go to the truth that Aaron speaks, there's no histories, no books, no, you know, it's almost like, and I don't know if she wanted to like, you know, take away from, you know, we're walking away from that, the idea of the books and the histories, because obviously that idea has been tainted now by that society. But again, there's that whole idea of like the little bit of yeast ruins the the dough and stuff. So and like, I think it actually mentions right in the beginning when they're talking about the histories, those that's why those two histories in the very beginning of the book are so uh, prevalent to me, is because in those it talks about how the 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 book that they uh rely on, like the Bible, is twisted mm -hmm. and how they yeah. changed it because they didn't quite follow the first book, which was obviously the Bible. So they changed it to their own but kept them a lot of it so it's interesting because yeah that's the theme of the whole entire book you know yeah. was that it is is very big topics like yeah lots to go on i was like well where do i start i don't even know like there's so many like offshoots and yeah and i think we lost that comparison like i like as i read the second and third book i completely forgot almost about the books of the histories and what they had because they had written word to go off of and they had the original bible to you know take out and put in what they wanted almost and you know when the seers went you know and separated from that they only had aaron's word to go off of you know and so just to ground all of that for the characters and for the storyline, that would have been good to have that continuation of the opposites of the lies and the truth. And then when we get into that more spiritual battle at the end of like, because there's literally like dark spiritual battles in the next two books. And when we get into that, it would have been nice to keep that opposites of light and dark. Mm -hmm. And even like to, to believe it would have made even the more supernatural aspects of what some of these characters did a little bit more grounded and believable for me. Yeah. Because they were just going off and like, like, you know, you read at the back of the book that Elise never grew up in the Sears presence. Elise grew up in the authority city. So Elise wasn't taught any of this stuff, but all of a sudden she becomes the key to this returning and she just goes off on it with now being taught, grounded, and growing up in it. And you don't always need to be. Oh, someone should ask Michelle to explain what she was trying to get across or what the main message was. Yes, I 100% agree. Yeah. I would have liked to know, you know, what exactly Michelle was doing here. Because I know, like, as like, I don't read her dad, but I know her dad has themes and stuff and points in his books. And I just, I missed what Rochelle was to, was writing here. I just missed the bit of it in the- Yeah. You're not in the alone last in that. I, I did too. So um, I know some people really love the series and uh, like out of, but if you go on and you look at some of like, especially on Goodreads, some of the reviews that have been given, uh, yeah, there's a huge um, varied, because it is such a varied, <laughs> topic <laughs> you know yeah. so it's, it's very interesting and I think like I love that she highlighted this issue and I mm -hmm. love the issue of knowing that you are chosen by God um, and she really brings it full circle in the first book I don't know anything about the second or the third I don't know if I'm gonna read them either I just don't I'm not Sure, I don't. I would I, normally I go out and buy books. I I went to the library on this one just because I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Yeah, and I honestly would go to the library again for the second and third because I don't want to invest in a, in something that I I don't want to reread. And a lot of these, but they're so pretty. <laughs> yeah, like I'm a big library person. Like I actually took this off of, I think it was like an ebook off of Hoopla or Overdrive, which is like the um. The library's digital 
if you have a library overdrive, card. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, have overdrive. overdrive. I think it was off of Hoopla, actually. So I got it off of Hoopla, and like I said, I read it one night, and I was just really invested in her characters and her writing. Like, even at the beginning of The Calling, I was still invested from these characters that some of the events in The Calling actually made me very upset with some characters, which what happened to them. Like, I was still very invested in these characters. And I think I was maybe too harsh on some of the things that happened in the returning. But now that we've discussed it, I would have liked that um, comparison between lies and truth and, you know, that grounding to maybe fill the story a bit or connect the story a bit more, which would have made a lot of the things that happened in the returning make a bit more sense. Yeah. A lot of these were just so, like, we can still believe that we can do supernatural things with the power of God in us. Like that is all true. And like what these people did could be a possibility of what they can do with faith in God. And like, I do still hundred percent believe that, but a lot of it seems so strange because it was so quick. It was so, you know, you think it was developed from the first two books, but then you find that it was missing for Elise because she didn't have, that development from the first two books of that connection mm -hmm. to that belief and was just kind of thrown into it. So I would have liked a bit more grounding just for Elise's sake as a character because yeah. to be honest, in the third book there was very few characters that I felt connected to except for the original group of series from the first two books. I just felt very disconnected from these characters. And like, I wonder if the viewers, like, I wonder if you viewers are, 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 some of you guys have read the entire series or if some of you have read only the first uh, book like me and how you feel too, because, um, I mean, it is like, uh, very interesting. And if you love thrillers, like you're going to love this book. <laughs> thrillers and dystopian. Once you, you have, they're connected in this book and, yeah. But I loved Remco, and I was really excited to see that the second book was in his point of view. Yes. When she goes into that point of view um, for the first book, I just, I'm amazed at how she wrote him. Like, she, yeah, like, wrote, she's very talented as a writer. And she and thinks I, that with the calling and with him in the calling, like, his whole struggle with, am I sold out? Am I bought in? With this belief or not or am i just here because i love carrington and it, it's actually a very relevant topic for yeah. a lot of um today even and i just loved how she had that struggle with remco and that's like there's still so much of these books that i liked like the first two books are still two of my favorite books that i had like the choosing was my favorite book of 2015 and yeah. the was, like high in my 2016 list but sadly the returning it just because I felt there was something missing in some of the grounding for the younger characters or the next generation of characters, I felt like we just should have had a bit more solid solidity for these characters. Oh, <laughs> name pronunciation is difficult for everybody. Oh, what did we say? Oh, uh, that's how you pronounce those names. It's like, yes, I'm just, when it comes to name pronunciation, I just, I never know if I'm actually saying I think we're all terrible at them. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazed if somebody can get them, like, right. Because, like, I I really have a hard time. Like, I would think that this is Rachel, but it's Rochelle. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I think I've been saying Rachel Decker. I think I have to switch everything over now. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, we're reading the choosing for by Rachel Decker, and I'm like, oh, I will not comment in her comments section. I know how bad this can be because I used to have my maiden name is a French name. Not that I'm French, actually. I'm not completely. But I had a French last name, and um, it was brutalized. My poor last name when I was growing up was just, and then I went to cadets and like to have them yell out my name in different, I didn't, I would get in trouble and I'd be like, you're not even saying my name. I don't know. I'm not being insubordinate. I just didn't hear what you said. <laughs> my last name is actually French as well. And no one says it right. Exactly. And extra letters get in there and then people call me <laughs> and I, 
at the clinics or something and they'll be like calling this name and I'm like, is that me? Because like, that's <laughs> not how it's spelled or pronounced and so I just go up and I'm like, hey. <laughs> that's me? so funny. I have a better so, last name now. It's English and I think it's pretty easy. Um, so I know. My younger sister was so, so happy to get married and she goes, <laughs> no, like, I don't have to be called this anymore. And yep. then I'm like, yeah, but nobody knows how to say your name either because it's German. Yes, and I, I don't feel so bad. Like, I, I have sympathy for others and myself when I mess up other people's names. <laughs> I know yeah. what it's like to receive the messing up names <laughs> like you. Yeah, so, like, I guess going back, because we like to go on tangents. Um, overall, like, and I love how we do these live shows to discuss these books because – a lot of things get brought up that I don't think about on my own. And so it kind of gives different light. And so like overall, I still really love the choosing and the calling. So if you want to read the second book, I would still yeah. recommend it. <clears throat> like, and I still loved how it ended and I like some, and the spiritual part of it doesn't seem as weird to me anymore. It just, when I initially read it, it did. So yeah, like, I don't know. Like now I know what I wanted from it. What yeah. would have made it better? That's why I do. I love this talking because it does. It kind of goes, and I've actually gone back and restarted things that I once started a certain way and then chose it to, to now I feel so different about it or that I, I love it even more or I'm, I'm questioning some things and I've got to work it out. But it's interesting. I love, I love talking about them. Like it really, does help. I hope we've made this a non-spoiler free uh, review uh, talk show because I don't know. <laughs> no, I think I think we're choosing. We've done pretty good, and I don't know anything about calling or returning besides what you said. And I don't know if that's necessarily a spoiler or not. But you can tell uh, the theme for most of it. So yeah, like I do, like the choose the calling. I did not. Did we? We did what? Are they we saying didn't spoil we did? it or we didn't spoil it? I hope we didn't spoil it. Um, did someone say we did? She did. You did, but I don't know what we did. <laughs> if we didn't, or if we we did spoil it. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's I like the worst ever. You didn't spoil it for me because I can feel that way through the first book, but maybe through others we did. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you didn't. We're good. Okay, we didn't. Okay, good. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, the calling and, like, I don't know. I would still, like, if you want to definitely read them from your library, I would recommend it. Um, yeah, I think that that's where my route's going to go. These are ridiculously expensive books. And the, like, but they're so for the, pretty. For the paperback, oh, it's, well, it says U.S. fifteen ninety nine, but they're, like. Well, Canada is different. Paperbacks, for these paperbacks, they're at least, like, $27. I was like blown out of my mind of why these books were so expensive as paperbacks and then their hardbacks are like $35 like yeah I get it though because like and and they don't like Rochelle does not get to choose that so it's not something that she wants to have no, no absolutely I mean like she definitely got a winner of a cover designer though like for her books like the cover design for these books are fantastic so yeah, also, we should probably... like her writing is. I can't wait to read some of her next books because yeah, her writing is is so well done and just um like you can tell like she has a gift of writing and absolutely yeah, yeah. I'll read I'll read more of her books like yeah like, like and I think yeah. it's just. I, I'm so satisfied with choosing. I don't want to get saddened or like discouraged or like uh change my thoughts <laughs> but i love remco's character so yeah well if you love remco you really should read the calling because like he really like her character <laughs> development for any of these characters are fantastic like just... yeah the character arc is really awesome and like if if you're really um sensitive to thrillers and psychological thrillers and some uh stuff like like how would you describe that if you're sense if you're a person that's sensitive to violence and like uh, written out um for word uh what happens to people 
uh, I would steer clear, <laughs> but, but it's not that bad. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> if you can't watch this Criminal Minds episode, like I cannot watch Criminal Minds. If you can watch a Criminal Minds episode, you'll be fine with this. If you can't, I just skip. Like I, I was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I know. I was reading. I was like, go back. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I, need, I need someone to stop it. I need a hero right now. This is. Terrible. I know. I need to get through these pages really fast. Like, <laughs> so yeah. funny. But yeah, if you can handle Criminal Minds, like, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, Ted Decker is more intense. Yes, he is. I, that's why I read I can't one remember. book, and I was like, halfway through, I'm like, okay, close, and make sure all the doors are locked. Like, you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you hear a noise in your home alone. Ah! Like, oh. Yeah, it's quite a thriller. So, I mean, she gives a nice balance in a sense of, like, it, that edgy uh, writing is just incredible. So, yeah, she's yeah. super good as a writer. And I think, like, for this is her debut and it's a debut uh, trilogy, so yeah, that's like, a lot. That was well done. You know, that was a well done debut though, because that was like very strongly written. And, I wonder like, if her, her dad pre read it for her. <laughs> Give us yeah. I, I just don't. I don't hear a lot about this, even in the Christian fiction or publishing world. Like for some reason, like mm. I don't see as much of it as I think I should for the strength of the book it is yeah. and for the fact that she is the daughter of Ted Decker. Like I know she's I not know. writing on her dad's fame because obviously she can write, she can write yeah. and she doesn't need to write on her dad's fame. But for, for that reason, I just don't see it as much as I do. So I don't know, maybe I'm just not following the right people, but well, yeah, like when if I, you go on Goodreads, you can see a lot of people have read it and reviewed yeah. it and stuff. So it's getting out so we, there. Yeah. So we should go probably ahead. wrap up. What would you say? We should probably wrap up. Yes, yes. I think we went later than we usually do. Oh. Did we? I don't I'm, know. I'm not checking. I didn't even see the time, so I'm looking at it now. <laughs> It was a good series. It was like it was it was a solid series, even though there was moments for me that were like, mm. yeah. Overview like is pretty good. So I I'm not sure what I'm starring it yet. I don't know if I did yet on my Goodreads. I have to double check that. But uh, but after this, I like I like to review them and rate them after we've done the live show, so we can talk about it because it really does like balance yeah. things out for me and like yeah, it really helps. So yeah. Well, my two probably still say, like, the choosing and the calling, I think I did five and four stars, or both five stars, and I think they're probably going to stay that way. The returning, I think I did a three star, because for me, three stars are, they were good enough for me to finish, but there's things I wanted more from, and I think that's true, like, it was good enough for me to finish it, and it was a good ending to the series, but I, there's some things in it that I wanted more of. Yeah. And which I now know what I wanted because I was like, I have no idea what I want from this series. Yeah. Missing. Cool. Okay. I'm really excited for what you're gonna about to do. So go ahead. <laughs> Are, aren't you announcing the next Oh, am I? I yeah. don't know. Okay. You guys were so excited. Like, I mean, I'm so excited. I know Angela's really excited. And our next book. For February, even though we're already halfway into February, it won't take long to at all to finish this, and I hope you guys can get it. E-read, I don't know, your library, anything, just get it. <laughs> and that is A Viscount Proposal by, of course, Melanie Dickerson, and it is The Regency Spies of London. It's number two, right? Yeah, it's book two. Number two, and it follows Laura. Is that how you say it? Laura? I, okay, I have trouble. This is another character name trouble. Leora. 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 It is, I don't know if you guys can see this. Maybe. We're just going to ask Melanie. I don't know, it probably is backwards for you guys, actually. So L-E-O-R-A-H. I just I asked know. Melanie. Melanie is actually. In yeah, I know. You my, can just tweet her. <laughs> but she's actually corrected pronunciation for me in my okay. comments before. 
Oh, so that's awesome, actually. I don't mind being corrected ever, so it's kind No, because, like, I was mispronouncing Dina Slayman's name in the Valiant's Hearts trilogy. Oh, So I, Melanie told me finally how to say it, and it was... That's fantastic. so nice, because after you said it in your review is when I knew. And, by the way, I didn't have the second book. I have to correct myself in one of my next videos, because I thought I had... Is it Chivalrous? Yeah. But I don't. It was a different oh. book that I was thinking about. So now i got to go back and fix my video. Anyways, so this book isn't very long, you guys. It's like 279 pages. And guess who's done it already? Oh. <laughs> I read it in two days, guys. I just got mine today. How did you get it earlier? Like, like seriously. I. If you order it from Amazon, they say, do you want it on release day? I said, yes, I want it on release day. They actually ship it before release day. So it comes to your house on release day. Like, I got it the day it was released. I think I posted it on Amazon. You should have the same option. I know. I, I think I pressed it. Maybe I didn't press the oh, button. Do you, do you need to read the first one first? I would recommend it because you will get spoiled for the first one. And then you meet Leora. I hope I'm saying that right. But you meet her in the first book. So you get an idea of what her character is going to be like in the second book. And... Like, even though the first two characters don't play a huge role, they are, like, you Nicholas know, is her I brother. don't know. Like, I would say yes, but, you know, Melanie Dickerson, we should ask her, because Melanie Dickerson's books usually can stand alone. But she... However, my answer is always read the first book first. Like, yes. the fact that you read the second, like, books out of I order, know, I'm terrible like, that way. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm always like, Angela, but, I should have read the first book first. <laughs> I know, and, and now you're saying it again. I know. Don't it. listen to me. Listen to Angela. Read the first book. <laughs> yeah, like it happens every time. We'll, we'll get to the live show, and Melanie will be like, you know, I should have read the first one. I'm sitting there. <laughs> so, yeah, like, oh, man. <laughs> I would recommend the first book. Like, it's not, that one's not a hard read. Like, I don't find Melanie's books take a long time for me to read. I'll have this done in a day or two. So because, good. Yeah, like, and, for some reason, I'm enjoying her Regency writing better really? than her medieval one. Like, I'm just, I don't know what it is, but I'm finding her, I just love her writing in a Regency time period. Yeah, well, I so. think it's unique. But we should save that for the yeah. live show, which we have yet to agree on, so we'll let you guys. Yes, yeah, sorry, you guys. It's <laughs> We're having a hard time getting these dates. Thank you so much. I almost much. forgot today. Thank you very much to everybody who does like hop on and, and check us out and keep up with us to find out when it's actually happening. It really is a great blessing because yeah, I have five kids. We're both working and it's just, yeah, it's sometimes crazy for us to try to get together, but you can watch it on Angela's channel at the end. It's always posted on there. She does a great job and puts the cover on there for you guys. So you guys can always watch it. I actually go back and watch it too. Cause I love just like, I'm into the conversation, but to watch it later, it's like, oh, yeah, I didn't catch that totally. And, oh, yeah. So, it's, so I love it. I haven't yet. I like, for some reason, I can't watch myself live over again. I'm just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. I love it. Uh, all good. You are welcome. I love you, girls. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you. All right, so we're going to wrap up and say goodbye, and we will announce the Viscount's proposal live show when we have set a date. And so I hope you guys pick this up. It is a lovely Valentine's read. It's very lovely in that. And I, it's, you know what? It's almost a Beauty and the Beast. Really? It, it mm. has elements of that. So, mm. <laughs> so we know next month. Well, so. like, actually, you guys can check out Melanie Dickerson's, um, maybe, Angela, I don't know if you want to put it in a link below after, but if you yep. want, the, Melanie Dickerson had just posted out a blog post, or, and she might have it on her um, Facebook, the first chapter of the Viscount's proposal, and it's just a little teaser to whet your appetite and it's really really good it's hilarious actually <laughs> all right so bye guys thank you so much for watching we'll bye. see you next time bye